Hey guys, this is As Dijuki. And as you can see here, I've found myself in the heat of the heat of battle. I'm I'm on the edge. This is this is scary stuff. No, okay. Um lately I have been working on things to do with the holograms. Um if you have no idea why I just said holograms when this is a Minecraft video, then you should probably click on the screen right now to go check out that video if you haven't seen it. Um it's like a I found a way to use uh, a way to use horses to make like floating nameplates uh, that are like they look kind of 3D but they're like 2D and they like follow you where you look and yeah found a way to do that um, and I've been working with them lately to sort of figure out what I can do with them and I've found a way to make them touch screen yeah yeah touch screen okay yeah so you like hit them and it does things it's really cool but let's cut to the chase why am I walking around with a creeper in my test world with redstone everywhere with a fishing rod poking him well. I've been working on a little um, respawn chamber for a friend of mine for a PvP map, and yeah, it uses touchscreen holograms, so I'm going to use that to show you guys what's going on. So let's go ahead and uh, hug him. Splat. Alrighty. Um, so when I hit respawn, we're going to go over to that chamber and uh, check it out. Alrighty. Now here we are after I've respawned. Yeah, as you can see, there's quite a few holograms hopping around in here, and we have a beautiful model right here showing us what arm we currently have selected. Alright, so here's the holograms. How we go about navigating these is these little arrows on either side. We can go ahead and punch them, and it'll go ahead and cycle through the different items. So, um, you see here, did a full circle, back to diamond sword, and back to stone. Um, yep, so we can go through and customize all of these and change around what we want. Let's see, 64 planks. Let's get a an iron shovel. Not an iron shovel, an iron axe, sorry. Um, let's see, supply drop, that sounds good. Let's customize our armor. I want a fancy helmet. There we go. It's good pants. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I'm feeling that. Doesn't he look beautiful? Look at that. He's even, even doing a little walking... Walking demo right there, that way we can see see all parts of the beautiful armor demonstration. <laughs> as you can see here as well, it has the little floating little floating text that shows exactly how much each item is worth, and then it has a little preview of what the item looks like as well, which is pretty neat. Alrighty, so um, what will happen now is this little button here is like a little price check button. If we press that, it'll read out how much everything's worth, then we can go ahead and change it. Let's see, make that three, press it again. Boom, then I'll add it up again, etc., etc. That's going to add up quite a bit because that's a lot, a lot more expensive. Now, something else really cool about this, uh, which I, which I should show, is these carpets in my inventory. Um, these are actually weapon slots. So people always complain about, oh, it goes sword pick bow, it goes bow sword pick, or whatever random order they have it. So I personally think whatever you can use it however you want. So this is why this is a thing. So as we can see, they're color coordinated with all these different ones. Um, so like purple would be supply drop, red would be stone sword, etc, etc, and obviously armor is always going to be in the same place. So let's see, let's put my weapon over in the 8th slot, equipment in my 1st slot, weapon 2 over in my ninth slot, I don't know, food, food in 2nd slot, you know, that'll do. Um, and then we can go, go ahead and, uh, and press the, actually, actually I want cobblestone, I don't know why. Alright, check that price, that's how much we're worth, boom, press it once more, bam, there's my equipment in that exact order that we had it. And then there's my armor, all equipped directly to me. The water bottle is the supply drop, because potion IDs, I couldn't be bothered. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And um, I'll just show you right now. If I were to kill myself and respawn, I would respawn in the same place, with my carpets in the exact same place they were, and have the exact same kit already preset. That way I can easily go ahead and confirm again, and respawn again with the same kit. So yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys exactly how these touchscreen holograms work and how you can use them. Uh, so let's head over and do that. So here we are with the redstone and minecarts and command blocks and comparators. Alright. So, as you can see, this looks extremely complicated and to a degree it is decently complicated. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how a single touchscreen hologram works and um, show you exactly how that works and then maybe dive a bit further into some little elements on how this works. So over here we've got a little example. Um, so if yeah, if you haven't seen the filter that I created to make these holograms, um, head over to the video in the in the description below. 
um, all linked on the screen right now. Um, I've, I've made a filter to create the holograms. It won't make them touch screen. That's not part of the filter. Um, that's something you have to add afterwards, which I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do right now. Alrighty, so right here we've got a touch screen hologram. Whenever I press it, it's going to cycle from one to two and say the slime has been punched. Great, that's very useful. Um, but as you can see, it's it's pretty fast. As soon as you hit it, it's going to happen. Like, it's, it's pretty quick. So I'll show you exactly what's going on here. So if I go into game mode three... Oh, if I can spell game mode, game mode three. Okay, typing it super slow seems to seems to help with that. So as we can see, there's actually a slime at the location of this hologram. Yeah, slimes. That's that's how I'm doing the detection. If you haven't figured it out already by that strange splat noise that happens whenever I click one of them. So this is a slime that's riding a wither skull because wither skulls are like invisible entities that if you if you make something riding them, they just sort of stand still. And they're really useful for that. So as we can see right here, it's just sort of hovering. Um, then what's going on over here is this is just a, a set block clock. Um, see, it's setting a redstone block. And then over here, it's setting it back to air. So it's, that's clocking extremely fast, as we can see. Yeah, it's quick. Um, up here, what we're basically doing is we're testing to see if the slime's still at that location. So this command block here is testing to see if it's at that location, but as you can see, it's not plugged into anything. What's plugged in is down here, which is basically test for block. Um, so it's going and targeting this block up here, and then it's checking to see if it has a success count as zero. So the success count is the output that it gives um, Well, when it's successful or not. So when it's zero, it means the, the command was unsuccessful. So up here, this command was unsuccessful, um, then this will output. So when the slime gets hit, it outputs. That's basically how that works. Um, then when it outputs, um, it's going to go ahead and say the slime's been punched. It's going to TP um, at that location because when you click on it, it's going to kill the slime. Um, so it will leave the wither skull behind. So you need to make sure to clean them up afterwards. So that's what this here is doing. It's just TPing all the wither skulls down into the void. Um, and then this here is TPing all the wither skulls and horse entities that are really high up in the air. Um, just down into the void as well. I just did type not equals to player rather than doing two separate command blocks for the horses and for the wither skulls. Um, but yeah, it does the same thing. Then over here we've got a simple um, T flip flop. I'll set that to my sidebar right there so you can see it. So it's at two right now and then it'll go to one. But as you can see, when it goes to two, it actually goes to five, then back to two. Um, so what it's doing is it's setting everyone to one with the score of two and setting everyone to five with a score of one and then over here it's setting uh, over here it's setting everyone with a score of five to two um that's just so that um it'll basically rock back and forwards it's just a really simple little um school board t flip flop and then over here we've got the actual spawning of the holograms itself um so these are actually using an execute command so it executes at anyone with a score of test with a minimum of two um, so yeah, so when when it's a two, it'll summon an entity horse with the name of uh, clicking two, <laughs> and then one with one. That that kind of makes obvious sense. Um, yeah, so that's that's what that's doing. Uh, executes a cool little thing to use for that. Uh, thanks to, thanks to Traslander for showing me showing me the way with that. That's it's really cool. It's really handy. It's really flexible as well. It's a good way of um. It's almost like a little a little if statement kind of it's it's limited but you can do some really cool things with it like this um being able to execute it in the same command block and everything it's kind of neat um so yeah that's a really simple example um you can use the filters to create the holograms themselves and then just add this functionality later on um it's really easy to do uh, another thing you can do is you can actually name the slimes with a custom name and then refer to them up here with the custom name as well that way you can have multiple hitboxes inside of the same block um, that way you're not just testing the radius of zero just at that block itself. Um, so that that's another way to do it as well. Um, I use that over here in the armor section as well for that. So yeah, that's that's pretty neat. All right, um, I'm going to try and explain a few things on how stuff over here works. And uh, yeah. So I'm not going to go too into detail on how this works because it's, it's not out yet and I'm using it for a map that's not completed so I'm not going to go too into detail but I'm happy to show you guys how a few things work. Um, one cool thing that I've done with this instead of having a clock running for every single individual touchscreen hologram that would that would be terrible. 
what I'm actually doing is I am I've assigned the player that's using this booth um, a score of booth with one, and then I'm basically tracking everyone in booth one um, with with an objective that's checking for how many slimes they've killed. And then whenever that goes up to an increment of one, it triggers over here, and it basically fills all of these stone blocks here with redstone blocks and then back so every time a slime's killed it checks to see which one and then updates that way it's only one only one clock's running rather than having like 50 running which would be devastating so that's what's happening there and as we can see right here this is um this is using that same test four block success count zero trick um underneath it as well um all of these here and then they're all tiled right next to each other so that's that's sort of what um one two three four five six that row of six is doing they're all alternating in different sections. So like back and forth on the left, back and forth on the middle armor thing, and back and forth on the right. Kind of a dealio. Um, now these minecarts, these are actually custom named minecarts. So if I run over here, we can see where they're spawning in. So here's one here, one BC3. Um, they have all got rather abstract names, but I know what they mean for different sections of the system. And then basically what I'm doing is I'm TPing these backwards and forwards depending on where they need to be. And then once they're in a certain place, I'm executing a command relative to them by a certain amount of blocks. And then that's doing certain things like this here is giving me, giving me the carpet in that slot then. So this system down here is detecting where the carpets are at and then giving you the items and everything in the same slot. So that's sort of this lower section, um, this upper section around here. And that um, is doing sort of all the handling for like the touchscreen holograms themselves, then this at the back here are counters for like current equipment selected and where they are. So these are these are counters as well. What these are doing is um, this here would have a fill command run ex executed relative to it, um, and it would basically be uh, redstone torches down the side of here. That way it would only trigger over here. Then same on here with this one. And then with this one down here as well, um, which is a cool way of making it tileable using redstone torches because they only act, they activate in every direction but one. So you can use them to sort of tile systems too wide, which is kind of what I've done here, which is kind of neat. Um, so that's sort of how that works. I'll try and show you this right here. So this is the default layout of the, of the, um, the different slots and the carpets. So uh, in slot one here, we have red, slot two, yellow, slot three, blue, you see. And then over there, we've got two empty slots with the white carpet. Um, yeah, you get that. So if I press this button right here, we get that exact layout, depending on where these are at. Now, if I move these around, put food over there, equipment over there, you know, I don't know, weapon. Let's just put weapon in the last one. You'll sort of see it update here. I missed a button to fully turn it on. Here we go. Now we can actually press it and see what happens. So when I update it using this button right here, Boom. All of those minecarts right there snap to positions on exactly where I'm holding these. So as we can see in slot one, which is this line right here, I'm holding purple. There it is. Slot two, orange. It's on orange. As you can see, they're all perfectly in line. So now if I swap like yellow with um with purple right here, then repress this. I want to do it so you can see what's happening. Boom. You see that went to yellow, and then that up there went to orange went to purple, sorry. Um so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And now if I clear out those carpets and come up here and press this button it's actually going to give me the gear in that exact layout so as we can see weapons over here and then if i went back down here and gave myself the carpet back and moved the weapon over to there then updated it and cleared it and went back up here boom now my weapon would be over there so you see it, it's completely dynamic and it updates so that's kind of cool as well um, so that's sort of a little bit of a demonstration on how some of this stuff works. I'm not going to go too into detail though, so I'm going to stop myself right there. But but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, actually, I'm not going to stop myself there. I need to show you guys this. <laughs> so I'm using a uh, modified version of Command Block Signs, which is a modified version of Command Block Signs by Texel Elf, which was by Seth Bling originally. Yeah, it's confusing. But anyway, basically modified it so you can use decimal points as offsets. Um, so it's basically a filter that you can run um, see, like, like these are the, the, that's the name of this sign right here, which is a coordinate with an offset of those in different coordinates. So X offset is 0 0.4, Y is 0 0.2, and Z is negative 0 0.6 of an offset um, from each of those signs. And then I can refer to these signs inside of command blocks and then basically run an MC edit filter like up here and it'll fill in all those locations properly for me. So I've basically made this sign wall and then it knows exactly where to spawn all the horses and everything to make 
to make the actual room itself, so it's pretty cool. Um, that way I can actually duplicate these and put them around the place and move it around without worrying about all that all that jazz. So yeah, that's that's um there's a few signs involved as you can see. <laughs> including back here for for all this different stuff. <laughs> there's there's a few signs, but uh yeah, that's another thing I used that was uh really handy. Alrighty, I hope you guys have picked something up cool from this video. Uh if you guys make anything awesome with this stuff, please leave a comment down below or let me know some other some other way and let me know that you made something cool and I'd be happy to check it out. Um yeah, I'd really really love to see what you guys could do with this. Um, yeah, sorry for the no video thing, uh, recently. My, my mic stand sort of snapped in half dramatically, and then my shock mount did the same. Well, it was, it was, it was interesting. But that's alright, I've got a new stand now, so I can actually speak into my microphone, which is very good. Um, so that, so I'm able to record again, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys for watching, I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you next time.